This piece I know very well. It's a DC-300. That was the design I did. It began life uh, as a very different unit. In fact, the unit that came before it, that's the original, and it's marked D-150. It's a very different design inside. We took it to a hi-fi show in New York City, and when we came back from it, we collected the comments that we had, and the comment that came from Ed Straw, who was our rep at the time, he said, can you make something bigger? We'd like something even bigger. There were some other units out on the market at that time that were about the same size, and he thought that we should go for something really big. So, there it is, DC-300. We had not seen paralleled output transistors before, nor had we seen some of the circuitry that's in there that protects it. It made it a very reliable product, and that was really unique because solid-state amplifiers in the early years were not solid. It's one of those things where you put a, a load on it that's a trying load, and before you know it, the thing is dead. And you didn't even get a decent fireworks show. We're on a vacuum tube unit. If you stressed it badly, the plates would light up bright red. You know, you could have a you know, minor explosion on your hands. And you get a decent show for your money, at least when it died. But solid state, no, it dies without a whimper. <laughs> That was pretty much the story of the industry up until that time. For those that don't remember, the name was chosen carefully. It's a 300 watt amp, okay? DC-3 was a popular airplane at the time. And it's DC coupled, i.e. passes DC. DC is also short for direct coupled. So the name was appropriate to what the product is.